of course, I for, forgot uh, to remind all of you that uh, we talked about air force calculation. We talked about how to calculate volumes between two surfaces. And the last, then the last session that I did is uh, a design of uh, plants. Uh, plants is like lots when we are developing a, a new area, how to flatten and create plants or lots or lots, if you like, of a developed area. So this was the last lesson we had. Now we are going into roads. So let me start the software. Just to remind all of you, ZW card and civil card, ZW card civil and civil card are the same. It's just the ZW card civil works only on ZW card, whereas civil card can work on AutoCAD and ZW card civil. So I start my software and I will open a new project. So I, I go into just to remind you all how do I do it? File, new project. Here it asks me if to change set changes to the no name project, which is the one that I opened when, which was opened when I started the system. I say no, and then I will create. I will go to online training, which is the one that we are doing here. I will open a new folder and I will call it lesson three. And in lesson three, I will open a new project and name it lesson three as well. So what I did, I created the folder or lesson three and name the project lesson three. He asked me, do you want to save changes to the drawing? There's a drawing here, it's empty, so I don't need to save any changes to it. Good. The next thing that I will do, I will load coordinate file. I will load coordinate file. I'm doing it from the lower left one. We talked about it, this button here. This button here allows me to load txt file, xyz file, a csv file, prn files, csv is in excel, and so on and so forth. What I'll do now, I will load a, a, a file of coordinates, which I have here, it's named nar09 topo.txt. I will soon share it with you on the chat. I'm loading it here. I have it here. And then I will press refresh. Now we can see here in the progress bar, we will get the coordinates there and we'll soon see here it is. About to finish. Now here on the right, I can see the total number of points, 7,500. Okay, I hope you can see it. These are the points. You know what? Let me do something. I want to change the resolution. I'm working with a very high resolution, so probably it's very difficult for you to see the text. Let me change my resolution to uh, like this, maybe. Okay, I hope now the text should be much bigger. Maybe it will be easier for you to see. Please unmute yourself. Some of you have uh, background noise. Everybody, please unmute yourself. Svetlana, please unmute yourself. Please mute yourself, sorry. Okay. So let me open the lesson tree, which I just opened. Okay, now you can see. So this is where we've been. We have loaded a coordinate file here. All together we have, we can see it here, 7,540 points. You can see it down here. Seven thousand five hundred and forty points sitting here. And these are the points that the system creates. This is nice. What I'm doing now, I will share with you the I will share with you on the chat this file. So everybody, go to your chat. Go to your chat. Sorry, one second. Let me do it. Projects. Here it is. N I N A R 09 Topo TXT. 
it's here. Okay, so again, go to your chat and download the file that I just loaded into it. And just to remind all of you, just uh, open civil card and start, then go to file, new project, create a folder named lesson three and name the project lesson project lesson three. Then in the lower left corner, press the load from text file button and uh, browse for the file mar09 topo txt and then press the refresh button on the upper left. or button from the left. Okay, so this is what I've done. But I can start creating contours, but we talked last time about the importance of break lines. In this case, I also have a break lines. And the break line have been given to me as a DWG file. So what I'll do, I can open the DWG, but I want to edit here. So I'll edit as a block. How do I do it? In the DWG, insert in the command line. Which file? Browse. And I have NAR09 break line. So this is the file where I just explode it and put it on 00. zero. Okay. So this is a break line file. I know by, by, the, by it looks that it's from photogrammetry. But it's not so important from the end so there. So this is from aerial photo. Yes. Can we get the DWG file as well? Yes, Arnis. We explained it in last time that we can get the DWG and then filter the points. We even ran a small uh, example of that. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, so the question was that can we, instead of getting XY, start with coordinates which we got in DWG? So the answer is obviously yes. In fact, we, uh, this example to follow. I don't have a DWG if it, uh, but what I will do in this example, I combine. I, I want to, to, to do what, what you just asked me. What I combine here is that the coordinates, I got it from text file, but the break line, I got them from DWG not a text file. And this is what I will do here. I hope this can help. So it's a combination. It's a combination. It's a combination of TXT and DWG. In this case, DWG are the lines. Uh, by the way, Arnis, if you have any DWG of coordinates that you want to share with us and you want me to try to work with it, you can just send it now to me on chat and I will try to run it now. If you have your own DWG of points, we can try to practice it together. I'll be more than happy. I'll be more than happy to do that. So it's your decision. Meanwhile, let me continue here, then you can decide. So what I did, I inserted a DWG of break lines. What is break lines? It's actually a DWG that contain lines. All these lines are 3D, you see. And they will affect the terrain which I have here. Okay, so let me also share with you the DWG of the break lines for you to practice. So it was NAR09, yeah, this one. Okay. I just sent you a break line of DWG. And to remind you what I did here, what I did here is I went and did like that, seven. Um, uh, insert the DWG 
of the break lines using insert block in the ACAD command line. Explode it and put it in zero, zero, zero. So this is what I'm asking all of you to do. Just follow this. Anis, again, if you have a DWG that you want me to try and do together, we can try and everybody will learn. So feel free, just share it with me. When I finish this terrain, I will do it. You can just share it with me. Meanwhile, all of you, please did do what I have. I'm waiting for all of you to be in this point. If you encounter a problem, now is the time to ask me. All of you, please be in this situation. Let me know if you encounter problems. I'm here to help. It's important that all of us would be in the same position like that. Because based on that, we'll start doing designs. Um, Nancy, Nancy, Florida. Hi, good morning. Nancy, can you hear me? Nancy disappeared. <laughs> oh, no, Nancy is still here. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Hi, good morning. Nancy, from your comp which company are you? Hydronet. Sorry? Hello, Nancy. I can hear you. Hy Hydronet Consultants. Okay, good. Can you, for, did you succeed to follow up what I'm doing? Do you need a system? Nancy, if you need a system, just let me know. I can help. Okay, let's continue. So we have the lines and the points here. What I'll do now, I'll create, okay, but the problem is the points are here in the database, but the lines are just DWG lines. They are not break lines yet. Just a set of DWG. I want to convert them, convert them into break lines. How do I do it? I go to topography, topography lines. Here, I have the window for the break lines. Just to remind you, in the last lesson, we did use, use it to create our own break lines. Physically, we locate, we trace the points of the break line. Here, I have a predefined break lines, which sits here. So I'm using a technique named filter. How do I do it? Here in the break line, I'm pressing this button, filter. And the system, shows me the filter window and say, which layer do you want to filter? So I will press select, correct one of the line and press enter. The system says it's, it's a polyline, which sits in a layer named BL. It's a polyline, which sits in a layer BL. I'm happy, right? This is the layer which I want to filter. Then I press apply. The software will ask me to abort painting breakfast. This is the question. 90% of the cases press yes. I will not explain what it is for, just press yes. Now guys, it will take about 
seven minutes or five to seven minutes to scan this entire, depends on your computer. It can take up to seven minutes just to scan these lines because this is a very heavy duty assignment. You can see here below, it says filtering data and this is the progress bar. All of you have to be very patient, just do it and just see that the progress bar is moving slowly. I, I, I specifically decided to use such a heavy file to show you that yes, sometimes it takes time and we have to be patient. How to insert the blot, uh, Rose asked me. I, I use the command line. What I did in the command line, in the AutoCAD, the, in the AutoCAD or ZWCAD command line, I, 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 I wrote the command insert, I pressed enter, and then block, right? It's very simple. And then it shows me the screen, and I verify that it's on a zero, 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 and I use the explode because there's a mark on the left. I cannot do it now because my system is working. I hope you can do it. If you don't succeed, I can soon when finish show you, but not so soon. It will take, as I said, five to seven minutes. Depends. Oh, I see it's quite faster here, but it can take quite a while. So don't be alarmed if it takes time. Still filtering, still the filtering is going. Yeah, takes time. Meanwhile, if someone wants to talk, this is the time while the system is working. Where can we see the filter icon? When you go to the topography, okay. Filtering can be done to many things. We can filter break line, we can filter points. Like Mr. Anis here asked me, how do I, if I have a DWG of points, how can I do it? So there's a filtering for points, filtering for break line, filtering, filtering. How do we see the filtering for break lines? We go to topography lines from the menu. In the, in the window on the right, we have the filter icon. Press it. I hope you could find it. So the question is, well, how do I think, where can I find the filter icon? So the filter icon appear on the command that you want to do. Right now, we want to filter lines. So we have to open the topography lines and then from there, filter. filter. You see the icon, you press it. Then you'll see, see the filter, filter window. You press the select, a, a select in the right window. You go to the drawing, you select one of the lines and you press enter. The layer plus entity will be selected on the right window. If it shows, if it shows BL, as layer and polyline as entity, then press apply, which means that you're okay. And yes for the question. Just follow this instruction and then it will start doing what it does for me, which is the filter, which yeah, takes time. You see, it's about to finish. So I measured, it took exactly five minutes. More questions, please feel free. 
Uh, honestly, again, if you have the D, a DWG of points, which you want me to practice, now is the time. Okay, by the way, it's finished. It's finished. Oh, still walking. Okay. Ah, okay. It gave me a message. The message was below. See, when it's finished, it says 3,208 brake lines were filtered. Altogether, 3,208 brake lines were filtered. I press OK. Okay, no problem. Okay. So, you see, you, you have a list here. If I scroll down, total 3,208 brake lines. Now I'm happy, I have brake lines. Now I can create the surface with the brake line. I go to topography, contours. On the right window, I'll tell the software, create interval at 0 0.25 meter. Use, use maximum interpolation length of 80 meter. And also I want to see the triangles of the surface. It's not a must, but it's something that I want to see. And I press apply. Also because, and then now it will take some time. You can see it here. Start working on creating the surface from the break lines <coughs> and the points. So meanwhile, let me summarize what I did. I took points. I took break lines and create a surface out of them. The points, I had them as raw data, X, Y, Z. So immediately I load them on the lower left window. The break lines, I didn't have them as a text file, what we call this file. I only have them as DWG. So what I did, I brought in the DWG. I brought in the DWG as a block and explode it so it become part of my drawing. And then use something that we call filter to create a set, a database of break lines out of it. Because when I brought it as DWG, it's just a DWG, it's not break lines. So what I did, I went to topography lines, <laughs> sorry filter the break lines and got them in my break lines database. In fact, I, I took a regular 3D polylines and convert them into break lines. Now, once I have the set of points, I have the set of break lines, then I can create the surface, which is what I'm doing now. Any questions? Any questions on, on the things that you saw so far? Speak up or write, whatever suits you. So at the end, what you're supposed to see is a surface like the one that you see here. One second. I think the zoom effect a lot. Okay. So here it is. This is the surface. It's a set of triangles, as we saw, which are connected between points and the break lines. In fact, if I want to see the break line, when we filtered it up, the software created a new layer named T break lines. T break lines, here it is. Let me make it a green like that and make it a little bit thinner so you can see. 35 times like that. Okay, you see, these are the break lines. What we actually see is that this point interpolate 
up till the break line and not go beyond the break line. So here with break, you can see there's a small cliff here, a small cliff here, here. See here, in, uh, this is a road, existing road, I think. This is what it looks like, existing road. So in the road, you see these funny triangles, it goes to the break line and from the break line. It does not cross the break line, which is what's important for us. This is what we wanted to know. See these triangles, you see these funny triangles. These triangles, maybe we would build other way, but because of the break line, they cannot move beyond the break line. So this is what we got. I hope, any question about what we have done so far? Any questions? I know it, it looks like I'm investing too much money on the surface, but usually this is the problem because when we go to design, not that everything is easy on design, but uh, if we start like this, then everything will become accurate later on. So any questions so far? No. Okay. Okay, so what I'll do, let me, the triangles, I will freeze them. Okay. In fact, I can even take the points. I don't, I can freeze them as well. Yeah. This is what I need. I don't need more of this. So let's look at what we have. We have an existing road here. We have an existing road here. An existing road here. And what I want to develop is this area. This area. Because uh, it looks like there's some kind of maybe paths here, but it doesn't look like roads. So let's arrange it. Let's, in fact, let's start from the road, this path. Start from here and create something that goes through here. No, goes all the way from here, turn around and connect to this road. Okay, this is what I want to design. Any question before I start with my design? Any question before I start with my design? Guys, this is the time. None. Good. What I'm doing, I'm starting a new layer and I call this layer, I call this layer centerline because it will define the centerline of my road. It's a standard layer. I will make it the current and I will give it for the purpose of the design, a red color. So what I did, I just opened a new DWG with a red color and give it CF. And then I will start the polyline which start here. My road start here in the middle. Go. all the way up till here, no, up till this path. Uh, yeah, I'll do an IP here and okay, I want to connect here. So from here, let's assume I'm going here and like this. Okay, this is my polyline, this is my design. Okay, this one, this is my design. This is my road design, but now it's just a polyline. So I want to convert it into a, a road component or road beam. How do I do it? I go to roads, horizontal alignment. Again, roads, horizontal alignment. I have two things. First of all, on the lower right, lower window, used to have topography list. It now changed to design coordinates. On the right window, we see the horizontal alignment window. For now, it's empty. See, there's nothing here. There's no definition for road number one. I go select, 
And when in the command line, it says you have options, you can choose segments and you can choose polyline. I will use polyline because this is what I have. And I'm selecting my polyline. One found and press enter. See what happened. The system takes this polyline and convert it into roads by defining its intersection point, the high point points. One here, zero, one here, one, one here, two, and one here, three. And these are the three IPs and the coordinates are here in the database. If I press apply and tell the software, show me the layout, the software will take now and present the new road that we just defined. Here it is. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay, the road starts from here. What do we see? There are cross sections, each. Okay, I don't know. So let me create again and tell the software to only show me the distances between the cross section. Let's see what is the default configuration on my system. Okay, each 25 meter. I have cross sections. It starts from zero, one, two, and the coordinates with the block of the X, Y of the first IP, the second IP, the third IP, and the last IP. And all the sections along, all together, I have 34 sections. Right? The last one break into 26.99. The rest are 25, 25 each. Question so far? Any question so far? Guys, it's important. If you ask, I know that you, you understand. Any questions so far? No questions. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I have a road. This is the center line of the road. Obviously, there's a curve here, right? Not obviously, but in this case, I have a curve going here and another curve going here. Okay, let's see what's the distance here. Record. Okay, what I'll do, I'll create a radius here. Since this inside city doesn't have to be sharp, let's put it at 50 meters, right? This is one IP1, IP1. So I'm standing here in the table and I say radius, 50 meters, you see? Here, and I apply. Now let's see, so it's supposed to automatically update, right? Okay, here it is. This is a 50 meter curve. These are the details of the 50 meter curve or the geometric details. This is the first tangent, which starts at uh, zero plus 442. And this is the second, which goes to zero plus 502. So these are the two tangents that we have. Good. Now, uh, it reminded me that I don't want to see the sections as uh, 17, 18, 19. I want to see running distance here. How do I do it? I'm pressing the option button here on the right. I have a lot of configuration here for the roads, horizontal alignment. I'm choosing the one that shows here, defined sections. I'm pressing it. Then it shows which kind of format do you want to use. I'm choosing to format two. And format two num numbered and everything as running distance. 
I'm okay, okay, and apply to, to get the effect on my road. So you see that now everything changed from numbers to running distance. Again, how did I do it? I'm inside the road, I'm pressing the options, pressing this define section and change from format one to format two. So this is the first row, uh, sorry, curve. Now for the second curve. Here, vis-a-vis -vis IP2, and let's say here the radius is 100 meter. Because this is not a sharp curve. Yeah, one asked me a question, let's see. Okay, actually, at the while, this is what I did right now. I repeated it again. I created another curve to this one. How do I do it? In the roads, horizontal alignment, I have the road. I'm going to the relevant IP, the IP which sits opposed to the, here, this is IP2, you see it here, and enter the radius. In this case, I enter radius 100 and apply immediately, I exceed the two tangent. If I want to increase it, I want to do 250, apply, apply again. And now it will change to 250, one second. Here it is. See, this is much bigger, 250, and the tangent step change from here to here. How this is clear. Okay, okay. Now I want to do another thing. I want to move this IP a little bit from here to here. In fact, I want to move, let me see something. Uh, let me create a polyline so I know exactly where to move. Uh, object snap from here till, sorry, here. And now we'll extend this using this. Okay. I want to move my IP somewhere here in the, here on this line. I just create an aided line, that's all. How do I do it? How do I move IP? Listen up, listen up. In the design, I'm going to, again, roads, horizontal alignment and standing on the relevant row. In the design coordinates, which sits here, in the design coordinates, which sits here, I'm pressing the move. There's a button here, name move. You see it here, move. The command line said, what do you want to move? Polygon, single, single point. I'm saying single point is default. I'm going to the IP. I chosen it. Now he asked me in the command line, what is the best force of displacement? Base point of the I'm saying from here, this is the displacement. Now he asked me what is the second point of displacement? Where do you want to move? Where do you want to move? Saying here. That's it. The IP Location, please uh, be uh, the one that just join us, please unmute yourself, mute yourself. And we change the IP from here to here. I want to see the change. I press the apply, apply again. Now the entire road will move accordingly. See, the entire road moved accordingly. This was the original road. And this is the new center line. So the original I can remove or freeze. Let me do it again. How do I do it? What I'll do now, I change the location of this IP, sorry, 
this IP inside here. Okay, here in the center. Again, move, selecting, you can follow the command line, select the point, base from here to here. See, this is the location of the new point. If I press apply, then it will also update the road. See, everything changed and the road changed accordingly. Okay, so this is my road now. Any questions so far about the horizontal alignment? Question about the horizontal alignment because I want to move to vertical alignment. Guys, questions, please. Anyone, do you have questions? Rose, Nancy, Carl, Svetlana, Chalia, Hydronet Wing, Talia, Demetrius, Nan. Okay, okay. I hope it's clear. Yeah, there's a question here. Christian, if we have cross section, yes. What's the question, Anis? Okay. You want to create cross section? What, what's, what's the question? We have cross, we will come to cross section. The how, show please creation. Ah, okay, we'll get to it, of course. It's, it's a stage thing. For now, we are just creating the road. So we start with the horizontal projection and then we'll have the profile. Then we talked about these cross sections, how to design them, these cross sections, right? So it's stage thing, how to do it. Roads, vertical alignment, see here, roads, Vertical alignment. Again, roads, vertical alignment. See what happened. The system opened a new DWG and it named it no name at ver one. When we will save, it will give it a different name. It will call it lesson three, which is our project name underscore V1, vertical one, because we can have many verticals. The, the, the layout is here. The profile is here. It's two different DWG. We have the layout here and the profile here. Also what changed, see the menu disappear. There's a new menu just over the vertical alignment. Also, if you go into the lower left, this, are the data of the existing ground level. And this is the design data of the profile. What the only thing that I need to do now is to press apply and apply again. Now what the system will do, it will go along the layout, along this line and create a profile. Here it is. This is the profile of the road along the horizontal alignment. This is the profile of the road. So this is the existing ground level along our horizontal alignment. Each and below what we see is the ground level the distances, the section, and how the horizontal center line behaves. Start straight and then we have a turn to the right, sorry, turn to the left and then, sorry, turn to the right and then to the left with 
the radius and the medium. And these are the tangent points of the horizontal. Any questions so, so far? Guys, any questions so far? Okay. What I'm gonna do now is give you five minutes break. Both of you want to refresh yourself. This is the time. Both of you will want to practice. This is the time as well. Take five minutes break. We'll meet up again in five minutes, 11.08. Five minutes, just leave everything as it is. You can practice, you can do. If you want me to take over and see control, this is your time. Meanwhile, just not to, to lose what I've done so far, I press the save project button, which is on the upper left corner. It's a uh, save all the data of the project, including the DWG, the main DWG, the ver profile DWG and so on and so forth. So I have the existing ground level. All the data of the existing ground level appears here. This is the station, the running distance and the elevation. Now, for example, I have something unusual here. This is on section 475. Let me go to 475. It's here. Ah, okay. We are cutting here this uh, small hill. Okay, so it's natural. So it means that it's okay. There's no, this is the actual terrain. Um, let's continue. Now I want to design, and how do I do it? The system created, unlike the horizontal alignment, which I have to create my own layer of DWG, here it's a little bit different, more automatic. Automatically, I have a layer named VerEdit. This is the layer which I'm using to edit my profile. So I don't need to create it, it's already been created. So I just need to start designing with it. How do I do it? I'm doing a polyline and I will begin. Hmm, let me remind you that I'm starting from here and this is a road level. So I start with this road level. This is an existing road. So I'll do a polyline with objects now to the road level. And here so far, I will do something to be very close to the road level, something like this and like this. This is the beginning. This is my vertical profile. If I press apply, automatically the system scan the profile that sits on layer where edit and convert it into a profile. You see what's happened? The software took the polyline and converted it into a design profile. One here, one here, one here, and so on. And here we can also see the interpretation, we have IP1, vertical IP if you like, here, second one here, third one here, fourth one here. This is the running distance of the vertical IP is 88.969, which box is here, and this is the elevation. And this is the slope going from this point to this point. Here it's given in a, not percentage um, grade, and here is in percentage. 
So the display here is in grade and here is in percentage, but if I want to make it identical, I'm going to options and say not in grade, but in percentage with two dots after the day, after two, uh, two digits after the, the decimal point. Press okay and apply. Now it's supposed to be the same, 1.5 something. Okay, 1.57, okay. 8.74, 0 0.56, of course, you it up because I said, give me two digits. Any questions so far? Let me continue. Now, I also want to design a curve here. Now a curve I can design with radius like I did in the horizontal alignment, or I can design with a distance of the curve, where it starts, where it ends, what we call 2T or L. So I'll tell the software, start the curve. This is 25 meter, right? Take 30 meter here, 30 meter here, and give me a curve. 30 meter, 30 meter, it's 60 meter length. Sorry. Oh. 60 meter. I'm coming here to the 2T opposite the section, the IP here, and write 60 meter. And enter and press apply. You see, this is a 60 meter curve. If I want to make it bigger, 100, enter and apply. See, this is 100 meter. 100 meter from here to here. Is that 50 meter to the left, 50 meter to the left or to the right? Questions? And here to this code. Now, also I can do the same trick here, or I can use a nice feature which I have here. Since we know that this is kind of existing ground level and we want to stick to it. So we want the curve to move through this green line. How do I do it? I mark the curve. I press this button, arc through points. Then I tell the software, I want you to go object snap exactly through this point, this curve here, this point. So create a curve which its length is moving through this point. So the software calculate 61.8. If I will apply, sorry, if I'm happy, I can finish by pressing escape and apply. You see what happened? The curve was calculated that it goes through the point which I've marked. So here it is. This is my beginning of the road. Any more questions? Any questions to what I did so far? Any questions to what I did so far? No. Okay, I will continue. So I'm saying this extended, extend this up to here. So I'll do like this, extend, select boundary. This is the boundary. Good. And this is the extend. Okay, is this where I did? Yes, extended. And let me extend it more. Extend. Okay. Fine. This is what I wanted to achieve. And I will press apply. Let's see the difference. Yeah. Okay. It was extended up till here. Yeah. What's the question? Please do a length of vertical curve for 150, any curve. So, okay. Um, okay, here I cannot do 150 
because it will override this. This here I cannot do. Like I will do for this one because here 150 will override the other curve. So overlap. So let me do it here. From this point to up to here, from here, I want to continue again in polyline from here. Cut this till object snap, let's say here. And from here, here and here. Let's apply. Okay, this is my road. And the question was to make 150. I want to make this one 150. This is station 553. 553 is this one, station number, point number five. He asked me to do 150 here. One, nine. Okay, so I did once. Adewale, is this the question? Any specific reason or just to see if it can do it? No reason. Okay. Yes, thanks. Okay. And here again. By the way, another trick. Instead of entering the length, I can enter the radius. You see, when I enter 100, the software calculates the radius here. Very big one, 7549. If I want to enter the radius here, it's a trick. You see the caption here? It says 2T. If I click on it, on the caption itself, it's changed to radius. So all the tables change to radius. And this is the one we are talking about. So now if I want to change it, I can do it. Let's say 8,000 meter. Press apply. This will change to radius of 8,000 and the length will change accordingly. If I want to move back to 2T, I press here and it moves to 2T. So again, how do I do it? Click in the caption here from radius to 2T. And I can enter the watch, the one that I want to. Any questions, guys? Do you have any question about this one? Any question that you would like to ask? Because I finished with the vertical alignment and I'm going to the next issue. Question so far, this is the time. Before I'm leaving the profile. Sure, no questions. New user, experienced user, this is the time to ask me any question related to the profile. Guys, this uh, understood? Is this clear? Chat. Okay. The question was, what do you? What if I have more than one road? Of course. So you know what? I'll take the challenge and I will create another road here. So the question is, of course, I have a network of roads. How do I continue? Obviously. So I'll do an example, a short example here. And on the way, we'll learn another trick. Okay, first of all, let me just finish this session. I'm pressing the close and that's it. I'm back here. If I want to see the profile projected on the layout on the horizontal alignment, I go to roads horizontal alignment, press okay, apply. And okay, then I will see the profile data here. Have a look, you see? 
all the data from the profile were projected here on the cross section on my layout. Of course, these are all in layers. So we can give this one sec data, sec data. Let's, this is sec dist. This one, I'll give it something. Okay. So now what we have, we have pressed apply and it projected also the elevation that we just designed. Now the question was, um, I have another road. So let's do a road which start here. A road which start here and go all the way up to here, straight road. Oh, you know what, we'll build it with a curve. It goes from here to here and from here a curve, it's not sharp curve, start from here to the junction. So again, what I'm gonna do now is add another road, which start here from the main road to a trunk road goes here. How do I do it? First one, first thing, I will go to the center line, the same layer that I used before, make it the current, and design my road. I use the polyline. Let's start from here and go into here. And this is one IP and the second one is on the edge of the road. Say, let's look at this road, it's very strange. Oh, this is the center line of the road. Uh, we're in the center. Let me remove the object snap. Here, okay, this is my second road. But for now, it's just a polyline. So I'll do the same trick. But before going to the second road, I'm going to the roads list. I have only one road here. First of all, let me change its name. This will be the main, the one that goes around. The default was road one, but now I want to change it. So how did I do it? I go to roads, roads list, and I change this one to be named main. And the second one, we'll call it T1, this is T1. Okay, I have two roads. If I'll go to the horizontal alignment and I'm clicking here, I can now flip to the second road, T1. Again, I can move from main to T1. And I'm doing the same, select, enter, select, enter, three IPs, which we know already. Right, we have one here, and one here. Okay, this is the second road, and this is the IP of the second road. Let's say it's uh, 100 meter. Okay, no, it's too small, let's change it to, you know what, since it will be a junction goes here, I'll leave it at zero. But if, for now, you see this checkbox, update current road only, I can up, up, update all the roads or only the current one. So if I click here, It must fudge them because it works only this one. Good. Now I'll do the same. Go to profile. Press apply.
get the profile. The good thing is that the software automatically identify that there's an intersecting road. Remember, this road starts here. So it shows you are intersecting with road main. You are intersecting not left, not right, but dual direction. It's a T junction, right? Here it's a T junction to the right and to the left. So we have flex to two sides. And the other road starts at this elevation. This is the design elevation of the other road in this point, in the intersection point. So my design will start from here. And let me build it. Uh, I'll snap something like this. And another one. And like from here going like this. And before I press apply, I will trim. Otherwise, it will mess up the software. It will give me wrong, in, wrong results. Okay. Now it's okay. Apply. Okay, so this is my design and curve. Let it go more or less for this. So I'll use is the second row, go through line, this line. Okay. This line. Okay. One nine six. I'm happy. I can press escape and apply. Okay. This is my second row. If I go to the first run, I'm supposed to see the intersection. Where is it? Here is it. Okay, this is T1. But for this road, it's turning to the left, right? Uh, coming from here, driving, this is to the left. Yeah. Yeah, more questions. More questions. And obviously, go now to the horizontal alignment and update the second road. Best supply. Yeah, guys, more questions. More questions before I leave this issue of profile and horizontal alignment. I have a right to have a speak up. More questions. Yeah, no more questions. Okay, okay. Okay, there's one here. What is criteria for length for vertical curve? Oh, it can be speed, but uh, in this case, I uh, it's not, not the speed, it would, I use the, um, what I saw because I'm I'm connecting to some kind of paved. So I used the same, you saw I, I used the criteria to, to create my profile to the vertical core, to the existing ground level. So this was the criteria here. So it depends. In this case, I used the criteria of using the existing ground and minimize cut and fill volumes as long as possible because we see this is already some kind of, not here, but here. It's not a road, but it looks like a paved, unpaved ways. Okay. If you have more questions, just ask. I will continue. Don't hesitate, just ask them as we come along. I have the profiles, I have the, horizontal alignment. Now I want to create cross sections. Now listen up guys, it's, it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. So you have to be very 
precise and accurate and follow what I'm doing. The concept of cross sections, we have two concepts. One which we call it extract and one which we call detailed cross section. The first one, we are creating a template and we use, we design through the layout. We create all our layout and we use the extract to extract the data. The second one is we do the opposite. We define the cross sections and we got our layout. Obviously we can combine the two together. What I'll do here, I will start with my main road and I will create it from the cross sections. I will start with my main road, this one, define its cross sections, project it all over and get my layout. How do I do it? Roads, cross sections. Since T1 was the last one which I used, it picked T1, so let me move to main. This is a new window. The original window sits down here, see? Okay, so this is a new window. And minimize it, see the original, here it is. This window is divided into four main sections. The drawing, first table, second table, and the cross sections list table. By the way, the software calculate the road's length. It's 836 meter. This route of, from this point to this point. The first thing that I'm doing here, the first thing that I'm doing here is pressing the defined sections. We all know that the sections are 25, 25, but this was done only for presentation purposes here. Now we actually want to create them. How do I do it? Define sections. And again, each 25 meter, and I press up, okay. So you see, I've got a table. It has 25, 25 meter sections up till the last one, this one. And the next thing that I'm, go next thing that I'm going to do is to create cross sections, create the existing ground level along this cross section. How do I do it? I'm pressing this get T topo data for sections button, it sits here. I press on it, I press okay. Now the software will go each 25 meter and give me a list of cross section. Let me go to the first one, click. This is the first one, you see, to the left 20 meter, to the right 20 meter because this is the range. Left 20, right 20. I can change it, but for now I'm using left 20 meters. So in fact, what I told the software, go each 25 meter from here, from here, go 25 meter to the left, 20, sorry, 20 meter to the left, 20 meter to the right, and give me the existing ground level. Same goes here, 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 and so, so on. Here it is. If I want a smaller range, I can go to options, change this to minus 15, plus 15. The software will alert. You have entered a smaller range of cross section. Okay. If I get the top again, it will erase and recreates cross section in a range of 15 meter to the left. 15 meters to the right. Here it is, this is the first one, second, third.
until the end of the road. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? So again, how did I do it? I started with roads, horizontal alignment. I select and got it. Then I roads to vertical alignment. Apply and design. Now I'm in cross sections. So what I've got, cross section each 25 meter with 50 meter to the left, 15 meter to the right. Each cross sections like this, the name of the cross section is shown here, of course, is the one that's selected here. And the elevation in the center line, the design, not the existing, the existing is here. The design is shown here. 64.808. This is the design. This is the crown level. The existing data level, existing ground level here was also the data itself appear here. You see from the center line to the left, this is the data, to the right, this is the data, which was digitized. Okay, here I have what we call design ground level. If I were designing a ditch or only unpaved road, I would start here. But I want a fully paved road. So I'm starting from the top, from the crown level, which is the structure level. How do I do it? Since I have only two tables to show here, I will change this table. I don't want to see the existing ground level. I don't need it. I'm moving to structure level. How do I do it? Change from here to structure level. So here, this is the final level, the top level, and this is the subgrade, the Air Fox level, the design ground. I will start with the structure level. Yeah, some question on ground elevation row. Some there's are sitting on the other. Can it be separated? Okay, the question was some points here are on top of the other. I want to say something. What we see here is only uh, everything here, the, it's not in a real scale. It's in real dimension. You can see offset and elevation here. You see, when I move. So it means if I stand here, this is the exact offset and elevation. You can see it here. But everything here is not for printout. It just, so the software adjusted. Obviously some goes on the top. This is not the final product. If I want to make it final, I'm going here call it frames division. And the software asked me, how do you want to put it in paper space, in model space? I'm telling to the software, so listen up. I'm now dividing only the existing ground level, next to that one, I change it with my final thing. Only the existing level to divide them into sheets for printout. So I'm using paper space. I'm using a scale of 100 to 100, whichever I want to use. And I'm using sheets of A0. And I want each sheet to be a different layout. And I want my logo to appear on the right. And I want all the sections. And I press up, okay. See what happened now. The software will create, see, layouts. Or sheets if you like to each each a zero. So the first one was the, this one, right? So this is the first one, a zero. Here, you see here, it's because I created it 100 to 100, it does not overlap. It does not overlap, you see? It does not overlap, same goes here. By the way, there are layers here, so. Sorry, sir, please can you just repeat? Sorry? Repeat the, this. Okay, who, who is talking? Rose. Rose, Rose from? 
ROCC Nigeria. Ah, ROCC. Okay, this is a new feature. So you have it only on 10. In the cross sections, when you press this button, you have two options. One, we call it module space. Then it will take it out to separate files, uh, DXFS files. But if you want to use this one in paper space, you use paper space. And then you select the scale, the paper size. And also here you have two options. Either to put everything on one sheet or divide into multiple sheets. The default is multiple sheets. When I press OK, then automatically it take everything. And put it all together. Now, obviously, everything is in uh, in layers. So, oh, okay. Let's call this. Shown as a block. This is the center. So this one, I can give it. Okay, center would be red. And this one is cool. This one is ground. I'll put it in green. Okay. And so change it into. Any questions so far? Of course, the logo we learned how to change it already in the first lesson to change it to your own. Any questions so far? Anyone? Feel free to ask. Yes. Uh, can we replace the text with locals? You mean this text here or this text? Well, ah, okay. Greek. You want to be the Greek? Uh, there's a way to show it, but it's more technical. It's not straightforward. It's something that we have to show you how to do it outside. Okay, it for another one. Yes. Yes, it's more technical sense of the design. It's how to set up the ini files of the software and so on. Okay. Okay, but let me go back to my, uh, sorry. Let me go back to my cross sections. So these are my cross sections. So I change this to structure and this one to design. In the structure, I can read templates, but deliberately I don't want to, 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 to read templates. I want to create templates here with you. Very careful, very important. We are starting on Designing on the first section, it's very important. You can start on any one that you want, but for making things in orders, we click the first section when we start with it. And we are starting here. And we are saying at zero, the offset is zero and the DH is zero. We are starting with the crown points which is somewhere here. And we are starting to the left. And to the left, we are going with a minus 3.65 meter lane at a minus 2.5%. So again, how do I do it? I'm starting from the center outside, always from the center outside, from the center outside. I'm starting with zero, zero, which is the zero, zero point. 
which is according to the vertical alignment, the crown point. And I'm starting with 3.65 meter to the left with a slope of minus two. Gonna, sorry, slope of minus two, fine. How do I enter? Very important. We go, we put zero, enter, zero, enter. Again, from the center outside. And then minus 3.65, very important to press the enter. I don't enter anything in the DH, I go to the slope and then enter minus put on five and press enter. The DH will be calculated automatically. And if I want to see the result, I press apply. This is it. I went two point, I started with zero, zero, two and a half percent to the left. This is my lane. This is my lane. And from here, I want to continue with a shoulder of one and a half meter. So segment minus two, this is zero. This is minus two and now segment minus two. This is minus one, this is minus two. Segment minus two is one and a half meter to the left with the same slope as the row, minus two five percent. Let's see, here it is. Okay, this is the first segment. This is the second segment. And from here, I want the software to go at one to two until it stick the ground. Or if, if there's a de development of plots here, I can leave it like this. But if not, I will open it up with one to two. How do I do it? Here. And then in the software, if you are cutting, you want to use one to two. But since this is a template, I will also <coughs> define to the software what will happen in field situation. If you're in cut or fill, also fill at one to two. Let's see. This is it. The software open up at one to two, which creates another segment of 35 cm here. Let me do the same to the right. I'm going to the right. 3.65 at plus. This is not minus. This is plus. I'm going to the right. Enter, DH, enter, and slope minus 2.5. Again, minus 2.5, because from the center, I'm going down. Here, 1.5 at plus, but the slope go down, minus 2.5. And close with 1.2 and 1.2. Here it is. This is to the right. So this is my top level, my structure level. This is my top level, my structure level. From here, I want to define to the software that this is an asphalt segment. And this is just a soft shoulder, so I don't want to do anything. How do I do it? I'm coming here, going to the cover, double click, and change it to asphalt. Go here, double click, change this to as and I press apply. You see? Now this became asphalt, asphalt, soft, soft shoulders. This is the structure. Now, in this case, I also want to define the subgrade level. So I have the table here. I'm starting at the offset zero, I'm starting here. Yeah, one question. I'm back, sorry, no electricity, okay. I'm here at the center, zero. And from here, I'm going down. The total structure depth is zero, is five, 50 cm, 0 0.5 meter. So I'm starting my control point here, minus 0 0.5, I think half meter below. And from here, I'm going actually the same, minus 3.5 at minus 
minus 1.5 at minus 2.5, 3.65, minus 2.5, 1.5 at minus 2. Yep. And this is what I've got. Subgrade and structure, right? Subgrade and structure. No, not automatically. We'll soon explain how to project it to all this. Of course, we'll not do it one by one, but okay. For now, I'm just building a section. The rest of the section are still empty. You see, if I click on them, all of them are empty. I'm only designing in the first section. By the way, but the table is too big. It shows cut and design. I don't like it. I'll go to options and I remove this total air fox and apply. Okay, now better. Now better. Okay. And now, given that, this is the situation. I will want to project this to all the cross sections. How do I do it? Listen carefully. I'm standing on the section and I'm pressing this copy all to clipboard. I click it. Now everything has been copied to the clipboard. What is everything? Not the existing but the structure and the design. Everything is now in the clipboard. I will go to the last section, this one, and paste all. See what happened. All the data from the first section was copied to here. If I press apply, this is the last section. Here I'm a little bit in fill here. The rest are still empty. So what I want to do now is to interpolate between the first and the last for empty section. You see, interpolate empty section. I'm pressing the button, pressing all design, and that's it. Now I have all the sections. Let's start from the first. This is the first, second, third, four, so on, so forth. But we see now we have a problem. We didn't define, since I didn't see it, let's see, what happened like this? When the subgrade is above, we didn't decide divine a slope for the subgrade. So I'll do the same like I did in the structure I do here. One to two here, one to two here, one to two here, and one to two here. For the left, this is the right. So this is the right for field, but since I want to define to all, this is on, okay? But this is only been fixed to this section. The rest are still with zero. So what do I do? Let me go to the first section and put it here. One to two, one to two, one to two, one to two. Okay. Now, how to project it to everyone? Listen up. I'm standing on the cell. I'm inside the cell. I left click, I'm inside. I want to copy it to all the sections. I right click on the mouse and the software automatically open. Send it to, to which section? I'm telling all. That's it. This cell has been now been projected to all sections. The same goes to this one. All the changes that I've done, this one, and this one, left, right, all good. So, and then interpolate to rebuild the sections. Now everything is with this data. Go down, scroll, 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 scroll. All the sections are ready. If I want to see them 
in sheets, pressing this button again. And now the system will automatically recreate the layouts. in the CV. Yeah. Guys, question so far. Okay. Yes, it is fine for a straight road, but does the software calculate automatically from the from slopes of every section according a curve alignment information? Okay. Um, you are, I, I assume you are referring to a super elevation, which is a issue which we will discuss in the next training. The question was about uh, transverse slopes, meaning super elevations. Just to finish this training, Close, go to horizontal alignment and refresh. Now also with the contours here. And all the data automatically appears, right? The design contours, the elevation, and the side stick, the elevation all along. Side slope and everything. Yeah, chat. Is it possible set like standard material section like asphalt, AT, CM, sand? Okay. There's something that we call sub layers. I, yes, a, gen, a, not generally. You can. The question was okay, well, two questions. One was about what happened in super elevation. Um, for example, here. You see, the camera is still straight, but we want to create a super elevation here. And maybe here as well. So we'll talk about super elevation next lesson. And the second question is, what if I want to create sub layer instead of defining anything as a one cross sections with one, only one thickness? 0 0.5. So the, the answer is yes. In the structure here, I have something called sublayer, but um, it's not part of this training. This training is it's too complicated to enter everything to this training. So yes, uh, generally here, you open and create sublayers, for example, to the structure, you define a new sublayer, and you can say it's send ATCM or whatever, and then it will affect automatically. More questions? None. Guys, thank you very much. We exceeded our time. We are meeting next week, uh, exactly the same time. Uh, if you have questions, just practice. So next training, we can together try to see and learn from mistakes. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thanks everybody, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.